Question a lot of people often ask themselves who are learning how to code is, should I be coding every day? And how many hours a day should I commit to learning how to code in order to get the best results? And this is kind of a loaded question because everybody's circumstances are different. And the most simple answer is gonna be as much as you can. If you can code eight hours a day on your free time, then by all means code for eight hours a day to learn as much as you can. But don't overdo it. In many of my videos, I talk about how when I was learning how to code, I spent every waking moment of the day learning how to code. On my days off, when I didn't have to go to work, I would wake up in the morning open up my laptop and most of the time I would close my laptop and go to sleep because I spent the whole day coding, studying code, building projects, following tutorials, watching YouTube videos. My whole life revolved around code for 10 months until I landed my first job. Now, as a professional software developer, I code eight hours a day. Well, maybe not eight hours a day, but most of the time that I spend at work on my computer, has to do with code or talking about code or talking about solutions that will later be implemented in code. And when I was learning how to code, hashtag 100 days of code was a really popular thing and it still is. If you go on Twitter and you type in hashtag 100 days of code, you'll see a ton of people talking about their progress and what day that they're on and what they're working on. Basically, it's a way to hold yourself accountable. I believe 100 days of code started through Free Code Camp or was associated with someone from Free Code Camp when it was thought up and people started doing it. But do you need to tweet every day that you code? I didn't. I tell a lot of people to set up a Twitter account, get on Reddit, find any way that you can to network with people digitally if you can't in the real world to try to get help with questions that you may have, possibly find a mentor, or just surround yourself with social media that's gonna benefit you in your goals. But I didn't tweet 100 days of code and I learned to code for 10 months. And when I tell you I didn't take a day off, I honestly cannot remember one single day in that time frame, when I was learning how to code, that I wasn't doing something that was code related. I may not have written code every day, but I made sure that I did not miss a day when it came to learning about programming. If it was a day that I could not get to my laptop for whatever reason it was, I was busy with work, I was busy at home, I had other things to take care of, I would listen to podcasts, I would watch YouTube videos. When I was at work and I had downtime, I would read blogs, I had apps on my phone that helped me learn how to code even though they, they weren't the greatest, but it was something to supplement the lack of writing code that kept me going and kept me moving in the right direction. And when you ask how much should you be coding a day or how many hours a day you should be coding, I say as much as you can to get to the goals that you're trying to get to. If you're self-taught and you didn't go to college, you didn't go to a boot camp, you didn't go to a technical school that gave you a two-year certificate for programming or, or whatever, you have a lot of catching up to do. But think about it, a four-year computer science degree, someone is going to class every day and studying theory on computer science, they're learning programming languages, they're learning about design patterns, they're learning about database architecture, they're learning about how computers work, and, and they're learning every single day for four years. And then they still have to build a portfolio, they still have to pick a programming language that they wanna focus on, they still have to build projects to show an employer, they still have to go through leak code grinding, they still have to go through the same troubles that self-taught programmers have to go through, but they have four years of learning. And if you went to a boot camp, you have three or four months of learning behind you and you still have to build all those things that I mentioned. So when you're self-taught, you have none of that accreditation. You have none of that schooling. You didn't go to a boot camp. You, you didn't get four months of hands-on training for eight hours a day, every day for four months. You didn't go to college and you didn't go to class every day and you didn't have to pass your finals and you didn't have to study for four years. And if you're self-taught and wanna get a job as a programmer, if that's your end goal, if you're not trying to build your own app or start a startup or just build a website, but you actually want to get hired as a software developer, you've got a lot of catching up to do. So with those things considered, Yes, you should code every day and you should code as much as you can every day. But if you're not actually writing code every day and you're able to read a blog post or read a book or watch a video on whatever it is you may be studying at that current time for programming, then, then please do that because you don't literally need to write code every day. Although that's the best way to learn and that's the best way to get good fast is writing code 
every day as much as you can. That's where my biggest growth came was when I first got my first job and I was able to work as a developer and I had every day for eight hours a day for a year or two under my belt, that's when I gained the most experience. But when I was teaching myself how to code, I made sure to code as often as I could. Now, if you want a number of how many hours a day should you be committing to learning how to code, I say one to two hours a day is probably enough as long as you're able to commit that every day with the exception of skipping a day or two on the weekends or whatnot because we're human and not everybody can sit there and code every day or watch videos on this stuff every day. I have an extreme personality. I know some people out there are like me, but not everyone's like that. And honestly, if I had to learn now, given my circumstances with, you know, my family is bigger, I, my kids are older, there's more responsibilities that I have to tend to, it would be a lot harder for me to commit the same amount of time that I was able to commit when I was learning how to code and taught myself how to code to get a job as a programmer. But I think you will be okay if you at least can commit an hour to two hours a day. If you can only commit 20 minutes a day, then make sure that those 20 minutes are laser focused on what you need to be working on, what you need to be studying, what's the next thing that you need to learn to complete the project that you're working on. Focus hard for those 20 minutes. And on days that you can commit more time, do that. On days that you have the skip, don't beat yourself up too much. It's very easy to do this, but sometimes you need to take a break. So it's okay to not code every single day. And if you see those people on Twitter that are saying, you know, this is a day 90 and I'm doing this and I'm doing that, good for them. I didn't tweet this stuff. You don't have to tweet this stuff. If you need to do it to hold yourself accountable, I understand. But at the end of the day, all that matters is what you're doing and what you're focusing on and none of the other stuff. So commit the time that you can commit to learning how to code, build projects, don't get stuck in tutorial hell, Keep moving forward. If your goal is to get a job, then focus on those things. Check out my video that I talk about all the things you need to get a job and do those things and focus on those things if your goal is to get a job and code every day as much as you can and at least for an hour or two if possible. On days that you can commit more time and you're in the zone and you're in a state of flow and you know what, I have the whole day off. The wife took the kids to go see her parents. I have nothing but free time today. Don't turn on your Xbox. Don't go crack open a cold one. If you do crack open a cold one, just make sure that you focus on writing code that day. And don't be too hard on yourself if you wanna take a break. But remember, you have a lot of catching up to do, and if you wanna compete with people who went to a boot camp, if you wanna compete with people who have a computer science degree, your portfolio has to stand out, and your skills have to be noticeable. And the only way to build those skills is by building projects and coding every day, or as often as you can. I hope this video helps someone who's trying to figure out if they have enough time in the day to actually achieve this as a goal. And it doesn't matter if it takes you six months or a year or two years to get a job. As long as you're working towards your goals every day and you're just a little bit better than you were the day before and you're building those projects, you'll get there eventually. Everyone's different. Some people bust their asses and build and build and build and learn and network and they get a job in three months or they get a job in a year. Doesn't mean that they're not as qualified as the person that got there in three months. It's just that some people take longer to get there than others. And remember, the destination is the same, you know, and everyone's journey is different. So make your journey as good as you can for you. And don't worry about how long it takes other people to get there. Don't get hung up on feeling like you're just not good enough because you can't commit the same amount of time or you're not getting there as fast as someone else. Everyone's different, so just focus on you and you'll get to where you wanna be, trust me. With all that said, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you wanna see more videos on me talking about how I learned how to code or other random stuff that I've been throwing in on this channel, make sure to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I've got a playlist for learning how to code that talks about a lot of different tips and tricks and things that I kinda of learned while I was learning and after being a developer for three years. So make sure to check that out. There's a lot of good videos on there that could be beneficial to people who are learning how to code and trying to become self-taught programmers. All right, I'm gonna cut this video now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.